Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for slope of a line. And what does slope of a line represent and how can you describe it? Today, you will need a pencil or a pen. A highlighter might be useful. Your Jaguar dots should be on section 4.2. A ruler, you might need a calculator and your growth mindset, some determination and some perseverance. So let's go ahead and get started right now. So to begin with, let's define slope. I'm going to be using two notations, this little triangle Y, that's the Greek delta, delta Y. So it's the difference in the Y coordinate and delta X is the difference in the X coordinate. It just means that you're always going to start with the same point and you're going to find the difference. And difference just means to subtract. Slope we represent with the letter M. So the slope is delta Y over delta x. There is another equation that you may see in other textbooks or you may see um, other people write down, but this is how I represent it always. And it's easiest for me to represent it this way because I don't have to worry about these subs and the direction. I just remember that I'm finding the difference and I always start with the same point and I'm finding the difference of the y and the difference of the x. So slope tells us exactly how a line changes it gives us the direction. If it's going uphill, it's positive. If it's going downhill, it is negative. And it tells us how fast it changes or the steepness. So for example, if I have a positive slope, my delta Y over delta X will be a positive over a positive. It could also be a negative over a negative. If we were to read it, instead of going from left to right, like we normally read and went right to left, it could be also a negative over a negative, and a negative slope would be a negative over a positive. It could also be a positive over a negative. These ones are our favorites. These ones we'll use if we have to, but they're definitely not our favorites. So that right there, that is a very, very quick definition and explanation of slope. Does not necessarily make a whole lot of sense when it's all written like that, but once we start using it, it makes a whole lot more sense. So let's look at our first example of slope. So remember, X's and Y's need to be on there, and we're going to graph the point negative one, two, and three, negative three, We are going to connect it with our ruler. It's very important that we're using rulers in these, or straight edges, I should say, in these problems. And we are going to do this just by inspection, meaning we're just going to look at it and figure it out. These problems, I actually love these problems when they're on a graph because all I have to do is count. So we start off with what we remember, which is that slope is equal to delta y over delta x. And we write that down every single time. So I'm just going to count. That's all I'm going to do. So what does it take to go from here to there? And I'm going to count. I'm counting one, two, three, four, and five. I had to go down five. That's it. Just down five. And then I had to go over one, two, three, four, until I hit. We're almost done. We move the negative so that the fraction is negative. And that's it. So when the problem is graphed, we're just looking at it and giving an answer. This is called a slope triangle and a slope triangle is enough to show your work. Okay, so what if you don't have a slope triangle and you're just given the two points? negative one half and two sevenths. Well, then you have to use some kind of work. And so we are going to start off with what is slope? We know it's delta y over delta x. And so you need to know about your points. And so we're going to talk about our coordinates like this, x sub one and y sub one. The subs mean from the first coordinate, x sub two and y sub two means the points from the second coordinate. So from the first coordinate it was negative one and two. From the second coordinate was two and seven. And we're gonna write things down 
that we're substituting into there. And this is how I do it to keep everything nice and straight. So from my first coordinate, Y is on top, X is on the bottom, so it's going to be a two and a negative one. And then it's subtraction because it's the difference. And then for my second point, it's right here, Y is on top, so seven and two. So when I'm making my problem, I'm not trying to remember, and you'll see it in the book, there's an equation you can use, but I'm not trying to remember that. I'm just trying to remember I'm subtracting my Y's and subtracting my X's. If I start with the first point, I have to start with the first point and then starting with my second point. So now it's just simplifying. Two minus seven is a negative five. Negative one minus two is a negative three. And a negative over a negative is a positive, so my answer is five thirds. If I had started with the point two and seven, I would have had the same exact answer. It just would have been, the answer would have been five thirds instead of negative five over negative three. Okay, you're going to skip a page and then come to the next page. Sometimes you'll be given a nice table. Ooh, I like tables. You can see something cool with this. Find the slope. So we know that for slope, we need m equals delta y over delta x. And we're gonna write that down every single time. And now I'm gonna look between my points. What does it take to go from negative two to negative one? I added one and negative one to zero, I added one. And zero to one, I added one. So this is pretty consistent. I'm adding one every single time. So my delta x looks like one. It was consistent. Now, if these down here are also consistent, I have a slope. If they are not consistent, then this is not linear. And that would be a problem. So negative eight to negative five, that would be a three negative five to two, that would also be a th negative two to positive one is also a positive three. So our delta y is three. So we were able to get our slope just by looking at our changes. So we want to simplify that. Notice I'm not connecting with equal signs, I'm connecting with an arrow. That's because of equal signs just boop, boop, boop in a row. That's a run on sentence in math. So our slope is three. Had this been something else, so had this been, say this last one was a skip of two, so it went one, three, one, three, one, two, this would not be linear. This would not have a slope. So we wanna be careful. So what are our options of finding a slope? We did three different things. We did the first one, which was we could graph it. The second one, we could calculate it. So that was M equals delta Y over delta X. And then the third way was using a table. And in the table, the differences must be consistent. So that is it for today. That is slope. The slope tells us how fast the line changes and the direction that it changes in. We already know how to find the slope based on some previous work we did in class. But if you didn't know that, you know it now. So what I would like you to do tonight is I would like you to explain how to find slope to one of the grown-ups in your life or to a sibling or to your stuffed animal or to a pet so that you can explain it in class. And I look forward to seeing you later in class. All right, thanks so much. And remember, be kind to each other because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.